Good afternoon. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. Please get your copy of the authorized version and follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we will be looking at today. Read along with me, be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. It, you know, when I tell you, read along with me, I actually mean it, okay? I don't say that because it sounds good. I say that because, guess what, guess what, I'm not this trained person by Jesuits or any nonsense like that, I don't have a college education, I don't even have a good enough diploma, okay, I make mistakes. It's important that you read along with me, because guess what, like I said, I make mistakes, you know, and see, brethren who read along in the scriptures will correct me in the comment sections, like the previous video, um, bowels and mercies in Philippians chapter 3. Okay, I believe it was Philippians chapter 3, but see, that when I tell you to read along with me, <laughs> I mean it. I'm not just saying it because it sounds good. Read along with me. See, you need to be in here too. Okay? So, read along with me. Alright? And on that premise, the Word of God, the authorized version of the Scriptures, the King James Version, needs to be first unto you who are lost. First needs to be a bitterness before it can become a beauty. What am I talking about? Proverbs 27, verses 5 on to verse 7, but we are going to be concentrating primarily on verse 7. Check this out. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Secret love. Better to tell someone the truth in love, okay, than to have a secret love for them, meaning that, well, I don't want to hurt their feelings. Open rebuke is better than secret love. An open love is one that is truthful, doesn't hide anything from you. Now, there are, you, you know, you don't have to be a jerk about it. You can't have some decorum with this, but see... When someone who is lost, someone who is just a... I, I, dear brother sent some wonderful revelation that the Lord has given him in the scriptures, which we, we saints already knew, but he was just mulling it over again. Uh, the level, the depth that people will go when it comes to scripture to justify themselves is full of wonder. Full of wonder. Okay? It really is. And when some of these people think that they know a little, a little something about Scripture, they seek it not to justify God, but to justify themselves. That's why Bibles are popular and the Scriptures isn't. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. A friend. I have friends who are brethren. They wound my pride. <laughs> they wound my pride. And I praise the Lord for it. Because you know, after a while, you can run into this problem where you can start to puff yourself up because the Lord has used you for a while. Or, you, or you, you've been made aware that people have come to him through things that he has done through you. That's why when Paul's like, consider yourself, okay? Consider yourself 
when you're uh, when you're in a situation and to restore such a one in the spirit of meekness considering thyself lest thou also be tempted tempted to do what to puff yourself up and you see that with all kinds of these preachers youtube uh personalities as well okay faithful are the wounds of a friend a true friend a true friend a real friend open rebuke not to put a notch in their belt not to be a jerk but the faithful are the wounds of a friend the blueness where, where is that where is that um uh, where, 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 where is that uh in the, today's proverb go to proverbs 20. the blueness of a wound cleanses of uh, verse 30 in proverbs 20 the blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil. So do stripes, the inward part of the belly, the inward parts of the belly. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. But the kisses, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. See, we saints, who adhere to the scriptures <coughs> we tell you <coughs> excuse me <coughs> we tell you lost people the truth from scripture and see the scripture the words of scripture are what rub you raw now granted sometimes some of us can add a little attitude to it okay i'm I, I am very guilty of that. Okay, I am. But see, the words, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The authorized version. See, the words, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God, the words are what chafe you, are what cut you, to cut you to the heart. Some pricks to the heart. We're going to look at that a little later. <clears throat> but see, the words, the words, the words are what are pure. The words of the Lord are pure words. Purified in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Okay? It's the words that cut you. And you guys don't like that. And see, with the words... Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The kisses of an enemy, the NIV, the ESV, the non-King James Version, the living in the trash. The one Baptist guy, uh, he left a comment in one of the videos uh, giving all the superlatives about all the versions out there. That was good. I like that. Okay? Kisses of an enemy. See, you can go. This is the danger of any Bible will do. Find one that suits you. Suits you! You are your own standard again. <coughs> The truth of God is intended to first be a bitterness to you who hear it in order that it can soon become a glory. See, y'all don't like that. Why? Because it hurts. It hurts. So you're more willing to hear someone who tells you absolute nonsense, just believe and receive, God's not angry at you. God loves you unconditionally. All that stupid nonsense. And what on and whatever and whatever. But see, faithful are the wounds of a friend. The kisses of an enemy are deceitful. See, the word of God is supposed to, supposed to chafe you at the first. How many of you saints out there when the Lord was calling you on to himself through the scripture, okay, how many of you, when you read, were cut 
but then pricked. Because at first, what? Yeah, no one likes to hear what? No one. I don't care how, how great you think you are. No one. No one. Only someone who is at the end of their rope. Only someone who is being brought down that road. That what road? The Romans road. The road of brokenness. The road of contrition. The road of fear. The road of salvation, as it were. No one. No one. And this is why the enemy avoids it. And gives you the kisses of an enemy. No one likes to hear as it is written. There is none righteous. No not one. <coughs> there is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. This is Romans 3 by the way. Verses 10 on to verse 18. The verses that the sleazy believest. Avoid like the plague. Okay. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. <coughs> Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. The way of peace have they not known. Why? There's no fear of God in their eyes. There is no fear, where is that? There is no fear of God before their eyes. See, this is why you read along with me. Okay? No one likes to hear that. I know I didn't. First time I heard that, man, I was cut to the heart. But see, the Lord kept, the Lord kept after me and I kept after the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay? It's meant, to, it's meant to chafe you at the first. It's meant to be hard. This, the scripture is contrary to your flesh. Of course. It's supposed to be that way at the first. It has to be a suffering before it can become a glory. You have to be broken before you can be fixed. You have to die to your self-righteousness in order to be born again and made a new creature. But see, the enemy, because no one likes that. They don't want to hear that. I don't give a damn what you want to hear. You're going to hear what you need to hear. You heard me right. Let's continue in Proverbs 27. Verse 7. Now look at this verse. The full soul loatheth an honeycomb. But to the hungry soul, every bitter thing. Full soul. Full soul. Proverbs chapter 1. I thought we're my uh, that because we're going to reference this a little bit. Okay. This isn't necessarily an expository video, just so you know. Uh, Proverbs 1, 24 and 33. The full soul loatheth the honeycomb. You ever thought about that? Well, we're going to think about it today. Proverbs 24, uh, Proverbs 1, 24, under the close. <clears throat> because I have called and ye refused. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Because I have called and ye refused. <clears throat> I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have said it not all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. <laughs> you get one of these guys who don't know the Lord, don't know nothing of Scripture or the uh, Bible version thing, 
Uh, they resort to, you know, talking about, well, you know, the oldest and best. It's like, wait, you're, you're not even claiming to be one of these Christians. And you're going to throw that at me? See, that shows you something. That shows you something. Okay? Satan through Rome has given you the Bible. God has given you the scripture. And the enemies are very well aware that the Bibles are a bunch of junk. The Bibles are a bunch of junk. Okay, that devil one message guy, he can point that out to you even though he uses his Bible himself. Idiot. Okay, but I mean, the, the, the self-theists, so many people can point out to you contradictions in the Bibles. The scriptures... Rightly divided, there are no contradictions. There are none. And the ones that you think that are contradictions, you, you, you got to really, like, stop and look at the verse, okay, and compare it, all right? There are no contradictions within the Scripture, okay? Rightly divided. But see, in the Bible, they're meant to be contradictory to one another, okay? All right? So, people who know not the Lord and want nothing to do with anything in regards to Christianity, and that's good for you, but they hear these things, and then when they encounter we saints, they go off of the premise. They base what they go off of, of something false to begin with. Hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Verse 26, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? <clears throat> For that they hated knowledge. And did not choose the fear of the Lord. There's that thing about choice again. The Lord can save anybody. But remember, it's not of coercion. Never forget that. They were none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. See, right here what we're looking at is a good argument against some of you specific devils who live your life as a devil, all the while knowing the truth, and you think on your deathbed you're going to flip a switch and get into heaven, you're insane. You are insane. Them devils in your head, man, have messed you up. Okay? Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way. The full soul loatheth the honeycomb. The full soul. What is that soul full of? Hey, 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 hey watch your mouth. Muddled streams, yes, we were, but don't watch your mouth, okay? <clears throat> Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Mm. Mm. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools who say in their heart there is no God shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. <clears throat> so the full soul loatheth the honeycomb. Hmm. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way. Hmm. Psalm 81. Check this out. Psalm 81. <clears throat> Psalm 81. Verses 8 on to verse 16. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, if Old Testament, our instruction in righteousness, this was written under the law, under the law was faith and works, okay? Uh, eternal security was not available in the Garden of Eden. 
in the patriarchal period or under the law. No eternal security. No once saved, always saved. Okay? That's exclusive for this dispensation. Okay? All right? If thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. You know, like the little marionette or Buddha statue. But ultimately, remember, what is the what is idolatry the extension of? Self-gratification. Ye shall be as gods. Look at these guys who celebrate the 25th of December as an idol, as they have made it. Okay, they are their own gods. Okay, yeah, I, yeah I'll rub that in your face a little bit. Why not? Okay? All right, let's continue. <clears throat> I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Remember, for our instruction in righteousness, Egypt is likened unto a type of that, the world, okay? Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Here you go. The authorized version. We're, we're going to get to that in Romans 12. Don't get ahead of me. Okay? Verse 11. A shift. Remember, every single, almost every single psalm, with like the exception of Psalm 117, okay, with the virtually every single psalm, virtually every single one, has a moment of shift. Where it, if where it will be clearly addressing one thing and then shift and address another, address another. Virtually all the Psalms have that. That's one of the things to be noted about the Psalms. Here we got one right here. But a big but. My people would not hearken to my voice in Israel with none of me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. They walked in their own counsels. The full soul loatheth and honeycomb. Mm. <clears throat> oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my way. See, the Lord delights in mercy. He wants to be merciful. But you reject him, buddy. Today even, you reject the Lord. You are a child of wrath. The wrath of God is for you. Okay? You're an enemy of God. All right? And it's not like he's up there like, oh, 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 oh. not at all. That's not, the Lord rebuke you, you think that. And a lot of you think that. And Christianity, for the most part, tells you that. That God's up there. <laughs> That's disgusting. That's not the Father. That's not our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? That isn't. <clears throat> oh, that my people had hearkened unto me. And Israel, Israel had walked in my ways. I, sh I should soon have subdued, subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. See, what is, it, what is he saying? I wanted to be for you, but since you rejected me, now I'm against you. See, God's a fair God. He's very fair. And you got to be careful because he will give you what you want. Be careful what you wish for, okay? You want what's fake? You want the lie? Ye shall be his gods? He'll give it to you. He'll let you have it. Now go ahead. You want the truth? It's going to hurt you. It's going to cut you. Then it's going to prick you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah. Let's continue. I should, ha I should soon have subdued their enemies. And turned my hand against the adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. But their time should have endured forever. 
the haters of the Lord. Those of you that reject him. Those of you that, well, you know, the oldest and best, you know, what the Bible says, yeah, the Bibles are contradictory, not the scriptures. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. Now that's a lower case R, but honey out of the rock? <clears throat> the full soul loatheth the honeycomb, but to the hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet. Tell me something, dear saint. Do you still have a hunger in your soul for the Lord and for His Word? You do. It's something that the Lord fills in you daily. He satisfies you. Because as this stinking, sagging sin suit, we need to be fed. We need to be fed. <clears throat> Isaiah, Isaiah 2. Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah 2. We want verses 6 on to verse 9. Isaiah 2, verses 6 on to verse 9. <clears throat> Therefore, thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east, and are soothsayers like the Philistines. And they please themselves and the children of strangers. Talking about whoredom. Going away from what is actually truth. And getting, and going to the buffet line that, Satan's, that Satan offers you. <clears throat> their land also is full of silver and gold. Neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land all is also full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots. Their land also is full of idols. Buddha, Ishtar, Ishmu, Roman Catholic Mary, the celebrities, yourselves. Remember, idols are not always a statue or something like that. Idolatry is always the extension of the true idol. Yourself, dear friend, you are your own idol. The, the statue, the holiday, the whatever is the extension of the true idol, yourself. Never forget that. The land is also full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands. That which their own fingers have made. The mean man boweth down. And the great man humbleth himself. Therefore forgive him not. The most, like I, I think about the, uh, the mafioso guys. Who are willing to act all humble in front of one of their Jesuit priests. The mean man, okay. The mean man boweth down. And the great man humbleth himself. Uh, for the Jesuits. <laughs> and of course... Isaiah 5, while we're here, we got to touch it. We got to. We're talking about this. Isaiah 5. See, the word of the Lord is first meant to be bitter to you who hear it, who are lost. Of course. Like I said, no one wants to hear that they're not good. But that's the truth. And it has to be a bitterness. It has to be a suffering. It has to cut you. First, in order for that little prick, that little pricking of the heart to come. Does that make sense? Isaiah 5, 20 unto 23. Woe unto them that call evil good, good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Y'all call progression sweet. That, that, this woke stupidity, wokeness. I, I, you know, around here we kind of encounter it, but I mean it's very simply decimated around here. On a on a 
larger scale here in America, this woke thing is still happening? It's like, what the... But see, what is that? Calling evil good. And good, the scriptures, God, evil. Okay? You learn about who God truly is through the scriptures. Okay? It's what makes the scriptures good. Because they point you to God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. These Bibles... Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. <laughs> you are your own standard. You are your own God, right? You are. You are a lost person. You are a self-theist. Okay? I've been watching a lot of that uh, Neil DeGracy guy, uh, that hemetic uh, astrophysicist. Brilliant man. Arrogant man. He is his own God. Brilliant man. If a man like that, if Neil deGracy and Eric Berg, if those two guys were to actually get saved and become saints, wow. Brethren, could you imagine that? Could you imagine what kind of damage to Mystery Babylon the Lord would do through Eric Berg? <laughs> Think about that. I, I know it's probably never going to happen, of course. Unfortunately, it could, it could, it could. But wow, if Eric Berg, Dr. Eric Berg, if he were a saved man, wow. I don't think he'd live too long if he were saying, because a guy like that, he, he'd, he'd go headlong right after the nonsense that the Jesuits have you people believe. He, he, would, he, would, be, he would be a tremendous enemy unto the devil. Neil de Gracie. You know, a lot of people were deceived by Kent Helvin. He's a Jesuit. Okay, A lot of his old, old, earlier stuff about creation science, it was decent. Yes, it was. That cannot be be denied. He's a Jesuit, though. He's a Jesuit. He's a lost man. Neil de Gracie. Neil de Gracie. If that man were a saved man, and actually believed the truth of Scripture, six days creation, Earth is probably now what seven thousand years old now, huh? That 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 guy would wow, wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> we can't even our, we can't even just like wow. Neil de Gracie saved, speaking on behalf of creation as a saint. Brr, wow, <laughs> he 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 decimate people. <laughs> but anyway, let's continue. But see, guys like that. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. Brother, which what you share that today in a video? I saw I gotta watch the video, but share that in the comment section, which you share with us today, if you want to. Which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Hmm. Ezekiel 36 The full soul loatheth the honeycomb. They're really full of themselves. <laughs> Feast on your own flesh. Feast on your own opinions and your own ideas. Uh, Ezekiel 36, 16 on the 24. Ezekiel 36, verses 16 on the 24. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man. When the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. <clears throat> their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Woman with her period, okay? <clears throat> Wherefore, I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land. For their idols were 
and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through, through the countries, the diaspora. According to their way, and according to their doings, I judged them. Careful what you wish for. And when they entered onto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, These are the people of the Lord, and are gone forth out of his land. The way you, is, uh, the way you serve the Lord reflects him. That's why these fakes, these infiltrators, these, these disgusting Jesuit coadjutor guys, you know, the, the sleazy believists who use profanity and justify sin and with their ridiculous, you just believe and receive, okay? Catholics with their behavior, okay? Who you serve reflects who you serve. And you Christians serving Satan, you get the point? But I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake which ye have profaned among the heathen whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. And this is talking more so of a future. But you know, when the Lord saves you and you're in the company of your former associates, and they see it's like, wow, something major happened to you. Something beyond your own. Something other. Something other. It's going to be so significant that man, lost man, looking at it, cannot just brush it off as something, well, that's something they did be obvious. See, people can have changed life. This is why you gotta watch it with this one. Okay, uh, you know, did your life change? Dude, alcoholics could have a changed life. Drop that. There's going to be changes in your life, yes. But what is the catalyst to the changed life? Being a new creature. What makes you a new creature? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay? Christ in you, that makes you a new creature. Okay? Any one of you went through the power of your own will can change your life if you want to. But see, when it comes from heaven, the Lord, who dwells in you. You go the way of the cross, the way he elected, the way he has called you, and he saved you. That is undeniable. Why? Because it's not of man. See, it's meant to be a suffering before. See, this, this, this is the whole thing. Destined unto death. People don't want to suffer. I, I, I don't. <laughs> But it's it has there has to be a suffering before there can be a glory. There has to be a breaking before there can be a mending. There has to be a death before there can be a new birth. And without these, you have something that is fraudulent. For I will take you, verse twenty-four. For I will take you from among the heathen. And gather you out of all countries, and will bring you into your own land. And that, you know, it, uh, Israel, 1948 and whatnot, okay, that's, uh, okay, that's already happened in some respects, okay? All right? Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. 
verses 11 on to ver verses 1 on to verse 11. I'm not I'm using a different set of scriptures I alternate them which ones I use so bear with me okay Deuteronomy 7 verses 1 on to verse 11. <coughs> when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Girgashites, and the Amorites and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And we'll, we'll talk about this, Lord willing, in another video. Okay, but and when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, neither shew mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Why? Why? We'll, we'll address this in another video. But it's like, you know, it's always interesting to me. It's full of wonder. You get these selfieists who justify abortion, okay? <laughs> who call evil good and good evil. They come to you and they say, well, God killed all the Canaanites. Number one, no, he didn't, okay? We'll talk more about that in another video. But see, they come to you with that question, so, well, God killed the, the Ammonites and all these people God killed. And they're coming to you in what premise? That man is more just than God. Come on. Come on. That's the thing with self-theists. Self-theists. They are their own God. They put themselves here and God here. Okay? So when they come at you with these stupid arguments, and, hey, self-theists, self hey, Mr. Dave Murphy, you've, you've asked that before. It's like, how could your loving God, number one, I've already told you, God does not love you. You reject the Lord Jesus Christ, you are God's enemy. God's wrath is for you. That's been settled. But that's the question. It's like, how can a loving God kill so many people? Verse 4. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly? See, there is a point in someone's life where they will go so far that they, they can't come back. My dear brother from England, dear brother, the impossible is possible with God. We must never forget that, brethren. Saints, Church of the Living God. That is the truth. The impossible is possible. The minute you say that it is impossible with God to save someone, you're in heresy. The probability. I can safely say, look here and say to you that there are certain people that will not be saved. Absolutely. Not that the Lord can't save them. But again, how many times we got to say this? God doesn't force salvation. It's not coercive. Okay, it's not Calvinism. It's none of that nonsense. God doesn't force his salvation onto anyone. Okay, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. God can save anybody. Yes, he can. But he's not going to force it on you. And the farther you go, the harder. Dear brother, the, that one jerk, he ain't going to be saved. He's lost. He's a lost cause. He's gone. Give up on it. I love you. Please. Give up. Give up on that. Brethren, there are certain people who are sworn enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ. You found one. I found many. <laughs> okay? These people are gone. 
That is the reality of the situation. Yes! The impossible is possible with God. Yes! But he ain't going to force it on anyone. And someone who has tasted from the poisonous wine of the Vatican... But see, remember that. When the lost come up to you about, you know, your God killed it, it's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're coming at me with the premise that you're better than God. Throw that at him one time, brother. Do it. <laughs> wow. Why is it the one guy I did that to? He got, he, he got bright red. <laughs> he did. He did. It's like, oh, so you think you're better than God. I, well, I didn't. Inter yes, you did say that. You think you'd be more merciful when you'd kill someone because they cut in front of you and lying to get your coffee. O oh, Israel, are not his ways equal and yours unequal? Come on. Remember that, brethren. When you encounter one of these guys, a self theist, one of these ridiculous evolutionists, Okay? <laughs> all right? Uh, when they throw it, yeah, it's like, well, your God killed all the Canaanites. Uh, number one, no, he didn't. Okay, we'll talk about that later. That you Read the book of uh, Judges, okay? Uh, but there again, they're coming at you with that premise that man is more just than God. Hit them with that. And then continue. And then you come to here. Okay? God who made you has every right to get angry at you when you give what's rightfully his to something else, especially yourself. But, well, God's jealous. Yes, he is. He made you, and he has every right as your creator. See, you don't want to accept that. That don't matter. That's irrelevant, okay? It matters not. He is your king. Okay? You, you don't want to, I know many people, know of many, who don't want to accept that. It doesn't matter. Okay? You're going to accept it, especially when you're standing before him at the great white throne. Judgment. Okay? But see, this is why. This is why the children of Israel, number one, it was through Israel that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, would come. Okay? That's number one. Number two, they, Israel, under the law, was to be God's example unto the nations. And if you go amongst those who are not of your own, the probability of, for they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods, so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall, shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, and break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. So, I'm special. You read about this in Romans 11. Well, yeah, I'm something ah, ah, ah. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. <laughs> Rome. If God had a church, it'd be the biggest one. I, I've been made aware that some of our beloved have kind of a cringe thing when you hear God is a God and a little guy because a devil has taken the truth and twisted it. The reality is God is the God of the little guy. Okay? Okay. God's church, the body of Christ, is the smallest. There are very few saints. There are millions of Christians. There are very few saints. Come on, that, that's, that's fact. Okay, look at Gideon. 
Okay? Too many people. He whittled it down to 300. We could go on for the, on that for hours. Okay? Verse 8. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then Isaac thy seed is called Ishmael. Okay? But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and for our instruction and in righteousness. Verse 8, right there, Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Who is the little g-god of this world? I will tell you. Lucifer, Satan. Okay? So see, when you go the way of the cross, which is painful, death first, death to self, the word of God, when you first encounter it, is what? Painful. Unless you have some grubby looking, silly, sissy little, just believe in the same. God loves you. I mean, come on. Anyone would have a brain. Again, it's like, God loves me, but yet he's going to send me to hell. <laughs> it's just real nonsense, man. Anyway, let's continue. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Okay? So, in Proverbs 27, verse 7 again, the full soul loveth a honeycomb. Remember in the Garden of Eden? Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when Eve saw that the fruit was good looking and one to, be, one to eat and make one wise, full soul loatheth the honeycomb. What is that soul full of? Is it full of the admonition of the Lord? No. <laughs> what is it full of? <laughs> Keep that. Watch your mouth. <laughs> watch your mouth. Okay? So, we see a lot of these people who loatheth the honeycomb. Why? Because they're full of what? Themselves. Their own knowledge, their own wisdom. They know better. It's like I said, the selfiest, self theist, excuse me, who comes to you with the, well, God killed all the Canaanites. Well, no, he didn't. <laughs> no, no, he didn't. Didn't kill them all. But, uh, see, you're coming at me with the premise that you're better than God. Throw that at them one, one time when they come to you with that, brother. Seriously. Throw them at them. Throw that at them. See how they react. You never know if that might be the small stone past an avalanche to prick them to the heart. So the full soul loatheth the honeycomb, but to the hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet. Proverbs 19. Proverbs 19. Verses 15 and 16. Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep. I'm full of it. I know more. All I need to know. I, I, you know, you can't prove to me that your God exists. You're right. I can't, but he can. But you don't want to hear it. <laughs> okay. All right. I, that's not my job to prove it to you. He'll prove it to you if you want to hear it. You want to hear it? You want to hear it? No? Okay, then roll up another one and go smoke them cigarettes till you cough and go ahead and have your best life now. Enjoy your life because this is the best one you're going to get. Seriously, okay? Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. He that keepeth now, dispensational difference, he that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul. 
But he that despiseth his ways shall die. Dispensational difference. Why is that a dispensational difference? Because under the law, you had to keep the law. Okay? Okay? Today, you don't have to keep the law to be saved, be right with God. No matter what guys like Mark the Messenger tells you, no matter what those ridiculous, satanic, vile, black Hebrew Israelites tell you, no matter what guys like Ray Comfort, Paul Washer tell you and stuff like that. Okay, you don't have to keep the law today to be saved, stay saved, and be right with God to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? All right? All right? Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. But to the hungry soul, to the hungry soul, every bitter, every bitter thing is sweet. I remember. I remember that at first I was cut to the heart. Because why? Even back uh, 16 years ago, God loves you. God's not angry at you. God loves you unconditionally. Then you read, there's none righteous, no, not one. As a lost man, you know, long-haired, lost sodomite, okay? I heard that, and I was... I was cut to the heart. Cut to the heart. We're going to see this. When someone's cut to the heart, it usually it results, scripturally, cut to the heart results in gnashing of teeth. <laughs> okay. Attack. Anger. Hostility. Whereas pricking the heart, what should I do? Okay. When I first heard the truth, of course I was cut to the heart. But see, the Lord kept after me, and I kept after the Lord. I was hungry. And every bitter thing that I, the Lord was showing me about how thou art uh, vile, <laughs> okay, and that I will cast thee off, it's like the more that the Lord showed me of my lost condition, every bitter thing was sweet. Why? Because he was leading me on to himself to save me. You see? Y'all just want the good right away. In order for the word of God to be a blessing, to be precious unto you, it has to be first the suffering. And the avoidance of suffering, dude. <laughs> okay? And that's where these disgusting, sleazy believers come in. You know, just believe and receive. Uh, this is work. That's work. Don't just, just believe and receive and go about your merry way. No, 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 no. You shouldn't do that. But don't worry. Just don't worry. Well, I don't worry. I fret. <laughs> but we're told not to fret. Okay? Never mind. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1 and verse 3. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. Thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. You can read about Jeremiah 17, 9, and 10. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? I, the Lord. Okay? I try the, I know the heart. I try the reins. Okay? So, again, right here in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2, to prove thee to know what was in thine heart. You don't even know your own heart. Scripture tells us uh, someone who uh, believes in the... That's in uh, Pro, uh, Psalm 29. Come on. That's not Psalm. Proverbs 29. Come on. Come on. Where is it? 28. I think it's 28, brother. I think it's 28. I think it is. I think it is. We're going to find out. Uh, uh, where is that? Uh, yes. Proverbs 28, 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. So in verse 2, to know what was in thine heart, 
The Lord knows what's in your heart. You don't. You think you do, but you really don't. There's none righteous, no, not one. Hmm? You didn't go the way of the cross, broken, contrite, in fear of Him, called upon the name of the Lord. You were just da 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 da. Oh, I believe in you. Say you're not saved. That's vain belief. Thou believest there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Watch the sleazy believers play their gymnastics with that one. It's it's very amusing. See, it's proving to you, the Lord already knows. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. See, the authorized version of the scriptures it's a full banquet. Everything for the nourishment of your soul that you need to find can be found in the scripture. See, the authorized version of the scriptures is a living book because, number one, this is perfect and errant given by inspiration. It's the word of God. This is what the Lord has given. This is what the Lord has given us. Okay, the authorized version. Therefore, it's his word. And he speaks to you through his word, making the word alive okay you lost people don't understand that i get that but save people do but see that's what it is this is the living word okay it's alive all right okay now go to luke chapter six go to luke chapter six luke chapter six verses 20 on the verse 26 beg your pardon raining out there raining and thundering Luke chapter 6, verses 20 on to verse 26. Now, <laughs> uh, let me see. Um, where was that? Uh, when they okay. People will come to Luke chapter 6 and start at verse 20 and be like, well, this is a contradiction with the Sermon on the Mount. Hey, genius. The settings are different. We, I think we've talked about this in a, uh, another video. The Sermon on the Mount was the Sermon on the Mount of Olives, Mount Olivet. Right here in Luke chapter 6, he's in a totally different setting. Okay? Hence, it's not a contradiction from what he said on the Sermon on the Mount to what he says here. Okay? There are two different settings. Okay? Read, read the context on your own time. You'll see. It's, he's not on Mount Olivet, okay? He's not on the Mount of Olives. He's not on the Sermon on the, it's not the Sermon on the Mount, okay? All right? Totally different setting there, genius. All right? Just so you know. Luke 6, 20 on verse 26. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. He's, he's making reference unto the spiritual kingdom, Okay? Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled daily. See, we need to be filled daily with bodily food and spiritual food. The authorized version of the scriptures. See, what happens when you don't read the scripture for a couple of days? Some of you can testify to this. Okay? Where you don't read anything. Anything. Not a proverb, not a psalm. Nothing. You just go a couple of days. And what happens? Saint, your soul starts to hunger. See, there's this absurd idea that now the Lord satisfies you. But see, you need to continually be fed of the Word. You need to be continually fed. It's not a one and done. You go about your merry way. No. No, you need to be fed. Okay? You need to be fed physically and spiritually. Read the scriptures. Okay? 
All right? Yes, when the Lord saves you, He seals you. You are eternally secure. Once saved, always saved. Yes, but see, strengthening you, providing you nourishment in your walk with Him, that is something that needs to be constant. You need to be continually fed the truth, even though you have the truth in you. Okay? You need to be fed. Christianity don't feed you. They give you stuff laden with high fructose tar uh, corn syrup. Poison. Blessed are ye, verse 21, that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall approach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. And we saints are usually quite hated amongst Christians. And praise the Lord. Because Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the false prophets. But woe unto you that are rich. For ye have received your consolation. This is your best life now. And look at verse 25. The full soul loatheth the honeycomb. Right here, boy. Woe unto you that are full. For ye shall hunger. By then it will be too late. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Fools make a mock at sin. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. And now, one of you might look at verse 27. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. Do good to them which hate you, right? And verse 28. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Okay? Hmm. Love your enemies. By not telling them the truth? See, in context, this is for the kingdom of heaven, remember. God, remember that. This is instruction in righteousness because... Blah, the Lord hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, yes. Thus, the Old Testament, the law was still binding, and his, his first coming, he was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? Okay? All right? But how do you love your enemies today? Uh, here we go to Romans 12. Romans 12. Okay? See, people have this false notion of what love is. Okay, they really do. Love is truth. Love is truth. Basically put. Love is a little bit more than that, of course, but, you know, you're not wrong when you say that love is truth. Okay? You're not wrong. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the light. How do you love your enemies today? Romans 12, 20 and 21 or 17 on the 21, excuse me. Recompense with an S. To no man evil for evil. Recompense with an S. Recompense with an S is a verb. Recompense with a C is a noun. Webster botched that. He had the right definitions, but see, Scripture gives you a C and an S. Two different things. Our Father knew what he was doing. Okay? Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. And see, Christians will come to that and say, well, compromise truth. You don't compromise truth. If they don't want to accept the truth of the Scripture, then you have nothing to do with them. Other than to be a testimony and witness against them. Christianity tells you and has compromised truth in order to get along. That's not what God wants. 
You never, you never compromise truth to get along. Our Lord takes precedent. No matter what. He didn't come here to send peace. He came here to send a sword. He came here to send a sword. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. And that's why we're not killing false prophets today. They're going to have their hands full at the great white throne of judgment, okay? Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, okay? Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And what's good? Huh? The Lord, God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. When God comprises of spirit, soul, and body. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. Okay? Okay? So, how do you love your enemies? By witnessing to them of the truth of Scripture, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Either by word, and if they don't want to hear it, your behavior well, that they will behold in their rejection of the truth. And brother, if someone doesn't want to hear it, don't waste your time. Please, I spare you. Don't waste your time. Okay? If someone, example, I, I, would, I would be wasting my time if I tried, to, if I tried to convert Dade Murphy. Be wasting my time. Okay? It'd be a waste of time. It'd be a waste of time for me to try to convert, for me to try to convert Neil DeGracie. <laughs> that guy wouldn't even talk to me. You know, his, his, his nose is so up there. I mean, he's on Joe Rogan. That guy's a, a pompous individual. Uh, okay? But see, if someone doesn't want to hear it, go on to the next town. Don't weep over Saul, whom the Lord has rejected. Why did he reject him? Because Saul didn't want the Lord. Go on to the next one, brethren. Don't stay fixated on somebody that you want to see as a brother or sister. Okay. John 6, John 6, 26 on to 37. John 6, John 6, 26 on to 37. Like I said, I'm not using my regular other set. I'm using a different set of scriptures. John 6, 26 on to 37. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me. Not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat the loaves and were filled. They sought the Lord, they were seeking the Lord for the wrong reason. Not because who he is, but because he was able to give them physical food. They were seeking him for the wrong reasons. They were seeking him as if he were a genie in a bottle. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat, meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? And this is after the miracle of loaves. This is after the healings and turning of water and the wine. I mean, it's like, dude, he's already proven himself who he is. But... They didn't have eyes to see. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. Then said they unto him, What sign shewest thou then, 
that we may believe thee, what dost thou, wait, wait, wait. They said therefore unto him, what sign shewest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? The Jews require a sign. What, do, what dost thou work? What more did he, I mean, he already did. He already, even at this point, had already done many miracles. And yet they're still like, show us something. Bloop. You know, in, 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 uh, in uh, John 10, okay, I, I mean, it, the, the, the text itself doesn't lend itself to the Lord's exasperation. But, I mean, remember, <laughs> it, the Lord is just like uh, showing left and right that he has got the Father. And it's like these guys, it's like, oi, fake. But you got to remember, he's not a man as we are. Hey, brother. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus, then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, Evermore, give us this bread. See, they were thinking only with their belly. Their God is their belly. And they mind earthly things. This is why the rich young ruler, when uh, he went to Lord, this is why, you idiot, one message guy, this is why the Lord said to him, why callest thou of me good? There is none good but God. The rich young ruler only could see with his fleshly eyes. He didn't have eyes to see. His God was his belly. He minded earthly things. Okay? Remember that, brethren, for when you run into that about, you know, well, Lord, uh, Jesus said he wasn't God. Uh, yes, he, he, he did. They don't understand these things. Okay? Let's continue. Then Jesus, okay. All right, where were we? Verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am one of the many I am's in the book of John. Like I've told you several times, when, I, when you go through the book of John, mark the I am's. With you, you know, you get your little Sharpie gel or your pen, okay? Circle them. And then after you're done with the book of John, count them. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that my Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. And see, you might be one of you cute people out there, it's like, you'll never hunger! Brad, you just said, uh, listen, okay? We are to grow in our walk with the Lord by having our senses exercised by use, by putting into practice to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. The Lord has put himself within us, the saint. We are to work out, live out what he has put in. Why? So that we may be an example unto the lost. Okay? We are to hunger. For righteousness, we are to hunger for truth. And the Lord feeds us with the scripture. Okay? You're being cute. You just go on someplace. Okay? See, if you're a Christian and you have no continuing hunger for righteousness, for truth, but I'm okay. I don't need any more, maybe, you know, maybe a little, but I, I'm full. You're full of yourself. You ain't saved. You heard me right. You ain't saved. How could a saint have no hunger for righteousness? How is that possible? Well, the Lord fills us. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. But see, we are to work out what he has put in himself. Okay? You have to search the scriptures daily. You have to you have to put this into practice. Okay? 
Okay? And then, then there's some of you cue. It's like, no, you don't. It's like, you're right. You have to make the right decisions. But see, if you don't make those right decisions, the Lord will put you on. You're one of these guys. You, you think you're a saint? It's like, well, I don't read the Bible. Good for you. You're supposed to read the scriptures. I don't read the Bible. I, can, I know all I got to know. watching Hollywood movies justifying sin saying love is love abortion isn't up to the man right it ain't up to God hmm. yeah yeah go on someplace go on get the hints Revelation 10 Revelation 10 9 and 10 <laughs> Why would someone why would someone try to convince you that the book of Revelation isn't chronological? That that's something this is a little rabbit and we're just going to leave it alone. But why would someone want you to believe that the book of Revelation isn't chronological? Why? To justify an erroneous idea of when the marriage takes place. Which comes from Ruckman. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. Leave that alone. That was just a little personal thing. It's like, you should know better. Why are you doing that? Anyway, anyway, leave it alone. Revelation 10, 9 and 10. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter. But it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. To the hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet. And it's bitter in the belly. Why? Because, you know, it says their God is their belly. So the belly which is fleshful, fleshly, the word is contrary to the flesh. You know, the spirit is contrary to the flesh. Okay? Alright? So you eat the book, you eat, you know, the word. Don't don't do that literally. Okay. But you know, you ingest, you get what the Lord gives you, the authorized version. It's sweet to your mouth. But see, to your flesh, to your belly. It's bitter because the spirit lusteth, lusteth against the flesh and these are contrary. This is a spiritual book. Okay? And I took the little book out of the hands of the angel and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it up, my belly was bitter. Word of God has to be first to suffering before it can be in glory. Like I said, when the Lord saved me, when the very first time, the very first time that I read about in Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18, I was offended. I was cut to the heart. I was. But see, like I said, the Lord kept after me. And I kept after the Lord. I was hungry for truth. I still am. He satisfies. But see, we need to be strengthened, be renewed in your mind. How do you renew your mind daily, dear friend? How? Guess what? You can't! But the Lord can Matthew 11. Matthew 11. Matthew 11, verses 28 on 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and, and are heavy. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, not from me. Even though we do learn from the Lord, the Holy Ghost will, you know, the Spirit of truth, He will guide you into all truth, and the Lord is that Spirit. But see, He teaches us of Himself through the Scriptures. And <laughs> that you, you Christians who have been doing this for years and years, you think you've reached a place where you know something. And you do. And see, it's puffed you up. See, I beg your pardon. When I read the scripture with my father in the morning, it's like, Lord, let me see your word with the eyes of a babe. That I don't take for granted and think that I know more than I ought. That I get puffed up. See, this, this is something that the longer you walk with the Lord, that you, saint, have to be on guard against. Because look here online at all these so-called Christians who've been saved for years and years and years, and look at how pumped up they are, how pompous they are. We don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And see, again, one of, the, one of these glaring questions, one of the glaring questions that comes up periodically, especially among saints, uh, I, I know of, not know, I know of a woman, Christian, of course, who reads the scriptures, has read the scriptures her entire whatever. She's lost like a blind man running the race. How can someone read the authorized version of the scriptures, we've talked about this, and still be lost? John 5, 39 and 47. Search the scriptures. We're to do that daily. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. See, many people can read the scriptures, but do they truly believe the scriptures? And of course, the, of course, they're going to immediately tell you because they know that's what they're supposed to say. Well, of course I do. Really? Really? Time stamp this, and I show it to her then how can you justify leaving your husband and getting a boyfriend, Christian? I love, I love, and I, I, I'm sorry, I did just this, I'd love, I'd love to hear that reasoning. <laughs> I would. Ah, I, I mean, how could a Christian who reads the scriptures, number one, leave her husband, not divorce, but yet, and then yet go ahead and have another boyfriend while still legally married. Christian, read the scripture. <laughs> okay. How, how, how would one how would one justify something like that? Being a Christian for years and years and years and reading the scriptures at the same time. See, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Now see, yes, you can learn of eternal life through the scripture. Because the scripture point to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? But see, the mechanical, just reading the scripture without believing them truth. See, when the Lord was destroying me before he saved me, this was 
just like this this is the only thing there is I mean this is the truth I mean <laughs> there's none good no not one what do you mean how dare you and then it's like oh wow oh wow this, this is truth this is true and see if you don't truly believe all you Christians say that you believe it's true how many of you actually believe this is in the resurrection of the dead well I'm a Christian oh yeah yeah I'm sure you do I'm sure yeah I'm, I'm sure you say that you do but do you do you do you believe this 110 percent do you believe every word in this see many will say they do but by works they deny him See, that's the thing. Someone could claim to be a Christian. Years and years and years. Read the authorized version of the scriptures. And still be as lost as a blind man. Running a race. Why? And they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. Jehovah saves. Jesus. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Ken, Hel Ken Helvin. Robert Breaker. Gene Kim. John MacArthur. Paul Washer, uh, uh, Ray Comfort, Creflo Dollar, Pete Ruckman. Hmm? Come in their own name. The Ruckman Study Bible. The MacArthur Commentary. The Henry Morris Study Bible. Thompson Chain Study Bible. You get the point? Lutheranism. Calvinism. How can ye believe? I love this verse. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? And that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of the Lord, in the sight of God, excuse me. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. See, you might look at that, well, right there he didn't know. See, he's addressing people who didn't believe that he's the Mashiach. They didn't believe that God the Father was standing right in front of them anyway. Yet they had the scriptures. And these are the guys who should have known, but they didn't. Why? Because they did, everything they did was to be seen of men. Are you getting this? So he's like, hey, I'm not going to accuse you. The one that you claim to trust, Moses, okay, who wrote, okay, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, which they didn't, which you don't, okay, not talking to you saints, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? And these guys were supposed to be the ones to know that he was the Messiah, that he's God the Father, but they didn't. Why? How can ye believe which receive honor one of another? That's why and how, brother, sister, you can run into these so-called Christians who've been saved for years 
and read the authorized version every single day. Do you really believe this? Now see, they're going to tell you, yes, they do. But in works, they deny him. It's not that hard to decipher either. Now I want to show you something. See, the truth of God at the first, brethren, and you know this, saints know this, but you, you fake out there, you disgusting heretics, okay, you people who worship flesh, here's what you need to understand. Isaiah 52, verses 7 on 2, verse 15. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, and there is none good but God, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye, when the Lord shall bring again, when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth in the joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Made bare his arm. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. The man cometh unto the Father, but by him. That's a statement of exclusivity. Okay, I gotta write that down. I didn't write the other one down. But exclusive, okay? He's an exclusive God, okay? Exclusive God. He bare his, what does that say? The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. The way of the cross. It's available to everybody today. Okay? He's made bare his arm. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. He is the only way of salvation. To salvation. It is the Lord Himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on that cross. Okay? The Lord hath made bear His holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. It's there for anybody. His salvation is there for anybody to, to go to. But see, you have to go the way He elected. You have to make the right choice. God doesn't force you to be saved. You have to make the right choice. You have to go that way he has chosen, the way of the cross. Which hurts. And you don't like that. Okay? You don't like that. Of course you don't. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. But see... For the truth, the word of God, before the Lord can be a glory unto you. It has to be a suffering first. Depart ye, depart. Go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean. <coughs> that bear the vessels of the Lord. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you. And the God of Israel will be your re rear reward. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage, face, was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. His visage, that's the face. Countenance is a reference unto the body. His form. The Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, they ripped his beard out, man. They beat him. Bloody. He was on that cross, I believe, naked. Okay? So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. Isaiah 53, verses 1 and 3. On to 3. Who hath believed our report? 
to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? See. See, the Christ that we, the saint, offer you is the Christ, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, of the authorized version of Scripture. The repentance is a brokenness of your self-righteousness. You think you're your own God. That's what we're addressing again. Okay? You think you're your own God. Neil de Gracie, he's his own God. Bill Berg, he is his own God. Ken Helvin, he is his own God. Okay? And the list goes on and on and on. See, you have to be broken of your self-righteousness. You have to take responsibility because it's your fault. And you don't like that. You don't like that. And see, in order to be saved of our Lord Jesus Christ, that pain, that death has to be there first. And I'm telling you there, Christian, I did. I remember that one Donnie guy, sweet guy, lost. But I remember that one Donnie guy. It's like, I didn't come to the Lord because I was afraid or thought, no, I came because of love. You didn't come to the right Lord, dude. You're not saved. You went to the fake Jesus, not the real Jesus, buddy. You did, okay? You did, okay? <laughs> there has to be a death before there can be a rebirth. There has to be a suffering before there is a glory. You don't want that. So Satan comes along. Okay, but wait, wait, wait. So see, who hath believed our report? You mean to tell me God doesn't love me? Yeah, God does not love you. You reject the gospel. You reject the Lord. No, God's wrath is for you. You know, brethren, again, when you encounter that outside your door, immediately it's like, no, God doesn't love you. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that will flip things on their head, on their head, and that could be an open door for many things. Okay, you know, you're gonna tell me God love? No, God doesn't love you. What? You're a Christian? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm a saint. I'm a saint. Who follows the way? The way. Who is the what? The way? Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You know, the, the more you look in Scripture about that, brother, the the less inclined you should come to be ascribing yourself to a worldly term. That's all I'm going to say about that. But who hath believed our report? Huh? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Right there, boy. Right there. Come on, I know. The Jesus that the saints offer you, who is the true Jesus Christ, at the first, there's no beauty in him. Is there? He's not beautiful to you. Nobody wants to hear, especially from a saint, that they're not good, that no matter what they do, they can't live up. Nobody wants to hear that. So when a saint presents to you the actual Jesus Christ of the Scriptures, at first glance, at first hearing, there's what? He had no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, but yet he's a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifests in the flesh. See, and hey, Jake, you stupid little idiot. See, here's the thing. Again, you little jerk. Uh, beg your pardon, brethren. Uh, 
The flesh of Jesus Christ was sinful. God in flesh, who kept the law perfectly, never sinned, hence that flesh was sanctified, hence the blood of Jesus Christ was precious because he never sinned. Even though Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, and that flesh was sinful. Okay, you little idiot. Okay, all right. <laughs> Put that in your pipe, you little jerk. <laughs> I beg your pardon, brethren. That's for an enemy of our Lord, right there. Okay, yeah. But, but he, the Lord, is a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. God, who never sinned in sinful human flesh. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> God who never sinned in flesh. I just used the word bad. Anyway, and now I've got to put that in the description box. Okay? See? I make mistakes. Okay? Unlike some perfect King James Bible believing Christians out there. Anyway. Anyway. God manifest in the flesh dealt with what you and I deal with on a daily basis. Yet he never sinned. Hence, he's a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Okay? And see, when the Lord gets his hands on you through the scriptures, and you learn of him, and when he saves you, 1 Peter chapter 1, 18 and 19. 1 Peter chapter 1, 18 and 19. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and spot, which already explained. Okay? Precious. Precious. See, God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. But see, the one thing that God never did was sin. God can't sin. You and I, we sin every day. Okay? Hence, see, that sinful flesh was sanctified by God doing that no man could do. Hence, his blood was precious. Why? Because he never sinned. Him keeping the law perfectly sanctified that sinful flesh. Okay? Okay? All right? And uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 8. Wherefore, lying, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings as newborn babes, Desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Um, when you become, a, get beyond a babe, do you stop growing? You might think, well, uh, when you get older, your body grows upward, right? But spiritually, do you stop growing? Be really good, mull that around in your head a little while. Huh? Well, I haven't learned anything new in years. You you got some problems. <laughs> you do. You, you need to get your face on the floor there and pray for a little bit. And examine yourself. Okay? What? You, you're claiming to be saved? You haven't? And the Lord hasn't shown you anything? Come on, dude. If so be, ye have tasted the Lord is gracious. See, you lost people, when we present you the Christ who is, there's no beauty in him. There isn't, but see, he's a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Okay? And hence, when you continue to seek him, and he continues to call as he does, but you make the right choice to go after him, he becomes precious. When the Lord saves you, there's nothing more precious on earth than our Lord Jesus Christ. To whom coming? 
as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. If anyone asks me, it's like, what's the Lord Jesus Christ to you? Precious. I, I, there's nothing you could give me. Nothing. Hey, devil, there ain't nothing you can give me that I would trade, God forbid, for our Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing, no wealth, no nothing. But see, for those of you to whom the Lord is odious, see, you see with fleshly eyes, your God is your belly. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also, wherefore, where, where are we reading to? Verse 8. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same as made the head of the, of the corner, and the stone of stumbling and rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. That's not Calvinism appointed. Why? They appointed themselves when they reject the word. And 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Verses 1 on verse 4. Shimon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious Promises, once saved, always saved in this dispensation. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Hmm. See, everyone in, at some point in their life are going to be confronted with the Christ who is and the cross. Okay? The cross is significant because the cross is death. Okay? And what you do in that situation determines everything. And most people, yes, nobody wants to hear that they're no good. But see, what happens after that? Like I said, when I first heard that, I was cut to the heart. But you know what? I kept going. I want, okay, you're telling me that nothing I can do is good. What, what do I got to do? <laughs> what, what, what else is there? But see, majority of the time, what happens is you find out that you're no good. You're like, I don't want any more of that. And then comes along a Christian. Don't worry, that's heresy. Just believe and receive the gospel. Just believe and receive. And then they go on their merry way to hell. Psalm 73, 17 on the 28. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. Different dispensation. Sanctuary of God. You come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him. You call upon his name and he save you. He seals you with, your, with himself. You're once saved, always saved, eternally secure. What is that sanctuary? Prayer, reading the word, time alone with the Father. Dispensational difference is referencing an actual physical sanctuary. But this is our instruction in righteousness. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. 
Thou castest them down into destruction. Slippery places. Got to be careful what you wish for. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one awaketh. So, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Thus, was, thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee, natural brute beast, unregenerate beast, pricked. Cut to the heart, blood gushes out like crazy. <laughs> A prick. A little blood comes out. What, what must I do? The very first time I heard, I read Romans 3, I was offended. But I kept going. I wanted more. I wanted truth. I, the Lord told me I was in big trouble. I'm going to hell. Okay? The Lord showed me. He said, Greg, you, you're in trouble. And the first time you hear it, as I did when I was a lost man 16 years ago. Of course. You're just like, ah, I don't want to hear that, but see, the Lord was like, come here. Come here. Come here. Don't walk away with that. Come on. Let's keep going. See, that's the problem. Most of you, when you hear the truth, you walk away. This is a hard saying. Thought this offend you? Hmm? See, it's the words. The words, they are spirit and they are life. Let's continue. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Amen, amen, alleluia. Guide me with thy counsel and receive me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Acts 2.37 <laughs> And but did you do wicked Pentecostals? Okay, the, the thing about baptism, okay, <laughs> will be in the description box. Okay, Acts 2.38 is not the gospel, you heretical twit. Okay, you're Catholic. You got that from your mother, Roman Catholicism. Lord rebuke you. Okay? You don't understand. And most of you Pentecostals don't want to understand. So go away. Acts 2.37 Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? See, at first, these guys are drunk. But then they kept going. Prick to the heart. And a pricking of the heart and the continual, it's like, okay, like I said, when I first heard that truth in Romans, at first, very first, yes, I was cut to the heart. Yes, I was. I was, I of course. But I kept going. And see, as a lost person, you're in the book of Romans and you hear about how you're no good and nothing you can do can save yourself. The only one you have is the Lord who can save you. You continue down that road. Can he save you? Psalm 51. This is the actual closest in scripture that you are ever going to get to a so-called sinner's prayer. Okay, There is no prescribed say it this way and no 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 that no but scripturally this is the closest you're going to get 
Hefmer, and of course this is David when he messed around with Bathsheba. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me throughly from mine iniquity. Wash me throughly from mine iniquity. And cleanse me. Wash me throughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. I, I, I get... <laughs> okay, wait one second. One second. Beg your pardon. Just double checking on that particular one. I'm done with. <laughs> okay? I got it right. So. <laughs> Wash me throughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. There is none righteous, no, not one. See, what is being described here is someone who is truly broken. David was truly broken. Okay? In a diff different dispensation, too. Remember that. This is Psalm 51. This was written under the law. Okay? Got to remember that. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Fear the Lord. The inside. Okay? Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Verse 11 shows you the clear dispensational dis uh, difference there. Okay, today, okay, you go to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him. You call on his name, and he save you. You're sealed with the Lord. Once saved, always saved. You, he the Lord will not leave you. You're eternally secure. Once saved, always saved. Under the law, eternal security was not there. It was not by grace through faith under the law, jack smack, you idiot. Okay? Wicked devil. All right? <laughs> Restore unto me thy, the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness, of thy righteousness. See, you, you guys, some of you guys are like, you save yourself by your own belief. You can go off someplace. O, o Lord, open thou my lips. And, I, and my mouth shall shoot forth thy praise. And one too many of these Christians glorify themselves through the Lord, not the Lord through themselves. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. But see, like I've, like I've been telling you, when the Lord saved me, at the very first, yes, I was cut to the heart. But see, I kept going. I wanted the Lord. I wanted the Lord. I wanted not to. I didn't want to go to hell. And I believed the word. Every word of it. But what happens? Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. 
In Acts chapter 5. Thank you, Father. Verses 29 on the first 33. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of, those, of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. Verse 33. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart. And what happened after they were cut to the heart? And they took counsel to slay them. Took counsel to slay them. Hmm. And like I said, the very first time I heard or I read about Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on verse 18, I was like, did you tell me what, what, what? You know, but going. Most of you, when you hear that truth, you go away. And then you find something else to replace it with. Hmm? Acts 7. Acts 7. 48 on verse 53. Acts 7, 48 on verse 53. How be it the Most High dwelleth not in temples... Made with hands, as saith the prophet. God's not in the church building today. <laughs> Definitely not in the church building. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? What is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? And he's quoting Isaiah. And what does Stephen do? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Yeah! You people, you like your sin. You want your sin. You seek a God that will pacify you in your sin. But when a saint comes around and shows you the real Jesus Christ of the Scriptures, there's no beauty that you would behold him, that you want him. No, you want what's fake. Stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the dispos disposition of angels and have not kept it. Verse 54. Now when they heard that, were they pricked to the heart? Like, what happened? When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. See, in Scripture, the pricking of the heart is uh, resembles a turning, a repentance of what? Yourself. A cutting of the heart, scripturally, shows what? Gnashing of teeth, wanting to slay the messenger. Do you continue down that road of, of having your heart cut? Or do you, or come, let us reason together. Do you want to know more? See, most of you, when you hear that you're no good, of course, it's supposed, like I've been telling you, this, the scripture has to hurt you first before it can be a glory. You have to be broken before you can be fixed. You have to die before you become a new creature to be born again. And that's what Christianity, that's what the world has taken away from you. And the result of that, check this out, brother. Psalm 52. 
Psalm 52. In this, I love this. I love this. Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man, your own God? The goodness of God endureth continually. Thy tongue deviseth mischiefs, like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness, Selah. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. <clears throat> God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living, Selah. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. In Isaiah, we saw about how the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of man, at first, is, is not desired. The actual Jesus Christ, that mangled mess on the cross, the word of God that we tell you of the true Christ is contrary to the flesh. But what do you do with that truth? Do you want more? Or do you want to reject it? See, therein lies the rub. Therein lies the rub. Have you tasted and see that the Lord is gracious? Or what happens? Well, which Jesus? <laughs> which Jesus? There's only one Jesus that saves. But you are offered a plethora, hefe, of Jesuses. Even Charles Manson said that. Ezekiel 13, uh, 28, 13 on verse 18. Hmm. This is talking about Satan. Satan was in the Garden of Eden. Thou hast been in Eden, the Garden of God. This is talking about Satan. He's the serpent. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the emerald, <clears throat> diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, and the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Pipes, tabrets, ah, music, music. Mm. Satan is the anointed cherub that covereth. He was adorned with all those precious bright, shiny, glittering stones, precious stones and gold, and the, his tablets and pipes were lovely. Ha! Ah! Beautiful. See, Halle Weird tells you what Satan isn't. See, if you want to be a true Satanist, you ought to be a Catholic. Because Satan is beautiful. Let's keep reading. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, and hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire, from walking to and fro and up and down in it. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. Satan is created being. You look at verse 13. He was, all these precious, he was, Satan is the most beautiful thing that your fleshly eyes is ever going to see. But see, the Jesus who is, there was no form nor comeliness. And when you see him, there's no beauty that you would desire him. But Satan here, who has every precious stone as a covering, 
beautiful. Sounds good, right? Yeah. And what was his iniquity? What was his iniquity? Hmm. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore will I cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic with a K. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Pride. He was taken with his own beauty. And oh, you lost people. When God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, through a saint, through the scripture, tell you that they, they ain't good. They ain't none righteous. No, not one. All your all righteousnesses are as filthy rags, meaning menstrual cloths. You ain't good. There ain't nothing you can do. If you don't want to hear that. Long comes Satan. God's not mad. God loves you unconditionally. And oh, he's so beautiful. He's so beautiful. Beautiful. But he's not precious. See the comparison? The Christ who is, you at the first, there's no beauty. But you go after him. As he calls you, you go after him. And you taste and see that the Lord is good. And he saves you. And he is precious. But. Get your heart cut. And instead of going on. You go that way. Satan's there to meet you. Because why? Oh he looks so beautiful. Sin is so beautiful. and so, so beautiful to behold. Right? Right? And look at that. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore will I cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Where is that? Verse 17. Um, no, it's verse 18. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee from the midst of thee. John 8, 44. John 8, 44. How many of you saints were thinking of that verse as we read that? John 8, 44. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own fire coming out from within him. For he is a liar and the father of it. There, verse 18 in Ezekiel 28, Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. What does that mean? I'll tell you what that means. Isaiah 14. This is what Satan's thing is. And this is what all of you lost people who reject the gospel are too. Verses 13 and 14 in Isaiah 14. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And who is this talking about? Verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations?
And of course, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. See, that which is fake is what? 2 Corinthians 11, 12 on verse 15. But that, but what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. They're not. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Transforming themselves. Hey, they've had a changed life. Not derived of being a new creature. But hey, all of a sudden you flip a switch and it's like, okay, I'm safe. I'm going to change my life now. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And with all those precious stones, son of the morning. You know, though you wicked Pentecostal twits who have claimed to have seen God. <laughs> you've seen something. I'm not denying that you've seen something. Okay? Ghosts, devil, possession, uh, poltergeist activity, that's, that's real. You have not seen God. You've seen an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Then it shall be according to their works. Oh, and what a carnal, disgusting righteousness is it. God's not angry at you. God doesn't. God, you know, loves you unconditionally, uh, unconditionally bad. You know, <laughs> he has no requirements. Just believe and receive. That's hatred. That's hatred. Philippians chapter 3. And then we'll be done. A little longer video here. I don't care. <laughs> Philippians 3, 1 unto 11. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed, it is, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs who go back to their own vomit. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. You, you Christians, it's all about flesh to you. Believe and receive. You have confidence in your flesh in what you have done. Catholics, confidence in the flesh, what you have done. Calvinists, confidence in the flesh, what you have done. Pentecostals, and so on, and so on, and so on. Though I might have, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I am more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the Christians, Persecuting the church, not the buildings. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ. And it's not a thing of earning Christ. That's not what he's talking about. See, it has to be a pain before it becomes a pleasure. It has to be a suffering before it becomes a glory. There has to be a brokenness before there can be a fixing. There has to be a death before a new creature can be made into a new life. That's what you guys are avoiding. I get it. It hurts. But that pain is glory. 
will become one. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, I just believe and receive. I'm special. <laughs> you sure are. Yeah. Which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And then, idiot, that doesn't mean that Jesus' own faith is the faith that's in you. I, I, I don't know why that one dude didn't stomp on that, but then again, you kiss his rear end, so there you go. Yeah, anyway. That I may know him, relational, and the power of his resurrection, new life, raised from the dead, See, one of the biggest evidences that you Christians don't believe in the resurrection of the dead is that you seek to justify that which you claim to be rescued from. Again, I'd love to hear. I would. I would love to hear the gymnastics of somebody who claims to be a saved Christian, who reads the scriptures, and uh, I'd love to hear their justification for doing contrary to the scriptures, uh, leaving their husband, and while not divorced, having a boyfriend. I'd love to hear it. I would. I would. I really would love to hear. Uh, like, okay, how are you, how you going to get around this? <laughs> how you, I, tell me. I want to know. Okay? I've heard all kinds of stuff, especially that the sleazy believists are really good at that. <laughs> they really are of uh, going through loopholes trying to justify sin. I would really love to hear that. Okay? But see, one of the f key evidences that you, who, oh, of course I believe in the resurrection! But see, that I may know him relationally, personally, and the power of his resurrection in the Lord Jesus Christ is that power that dwells in you, if you were saved. And the fellowship of his sufferings. Man of suffering and acquainted with grief. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Being made conformable unto his death. His death. That he makes you a new creature that will lead into a changed life. See, so many of you Christians have that changed life, a religiosity that you put on as a facade, as a shoe. But see, it doesn't come from being a new creature. You profess that you know God, but in works you deny Him. How can you claim to believe in the resurrection of the dead, but yet not be made conformable unto His death? You, you, you lost people, you Christians, you don't get what I just said, do you? See, the saints do. And if you're someone who's looking for the Lord, come. Let us reason together, you and I. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Ooh, it's right there, boy. See, if you're a saved individual, the re resurrection of the dead, the redemption of the person's possession, yes. But see, we are made conformable unto his death, dying to ourselves and to that every day. Every day. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Okay? A daily resurrection. Why? Because you are a new creature, because you have to father the Lord, that power within you. How can ye believe? Ye who seek honor one from another, and seeketh not the honor that cometh from God only. You poor, egocentric sap! Poor, miserable, naked and blind, 
egocentric sap. That's going to be it for this video. I hope this might help some of you and whatnot. If not, whatever. The Lord be magnified. That's what it's about. Thank you for watching this if you do. I'm going to get this going, uploaded. Thank you, dear brethren. Thank you, Body of Christ, Church of God. We'll see you in the next video.